Hey everybody, welcome back to Dr. Bagpipe. Happy New Year. This is a short video, hopefully, on uh, how to take apart your bagpipe setup, uh, notably this one, a sheepskin bag. How to remove a sheepskin bag in hopes of using it again later. So hopefully I'm gonna set this up in a way uh, that I can retie it in easily. But in doing so, I'll you know basically show you in, in the reverse process what I did to tie it in. I think everybody, uh, all pipers, should at least try to tie in their pipes, uh, whatever setup they have, whatever that you know, learn how to change out their drones from a uh, you know a moisture controlling uh, situation like a Ross, which is what I'm going to uh, transfer over to for uh, a multi-tracking recording project. I use a Ross for multi-tracking because I can get the moisture conditions and tuning. Uh, I can replicate it over and over again over the course of a day or two days and get the same tuning and same sound and control. But I generally like the um, sheepskin sound. But um, anyway, I like to switch it out too. So I have a sheepskin bag that is kind of at the end of its life. Uh, I should be switching it out for uh, that reason alone, um, but I also have this other setup that I'm going to move to, and of course I'll make a video out of that. But uh, let's get down to the nuts and bolts here. Here is the sheepskin bag, and you'll see clearly uh, just through the kind of what I would call general rot, um, this is when the seasoning kind of makes it all the way through the sheepskin, and that tends to happen in certain areas that get a lot of moisture, as you can see in the back here. Um, this is a James Bag bag via real pipes. Um, but you can see that the sheep is actually in really good condition back here and is pretty well broken in. So I'm going to take this apart, you know, remove the stalks so that uh, I can hopefully use it again. Um, the easiest way to remove the stalks is just to just cut through everything and uh, just pull the drone stalk out. But um, it's really hard to tie in a sheepskin bag yourself. So um, I'm not going to show you that in this one, but I'm going to show you kind of through reverse engineering um, how I tied it in. So uh, you can just see in the drones, there is kind of a circular, uh, you know, it goes along. Basically what I'm trying to say is there's no evidence of what a star cut um, through the bag. This is uh, done through a hole punch. Uh, and they were done to the, a specific size prior to. So that makes tying in a lot easier. Um, what I have done in the past and what pipers used to do was make the measurements yourself and then create uh, a circle and a star pattern and then with an X-Acto knife cut out, you know, basically through eight cross cuts, uh, an, an aperture for you to put the drone in and tie it off. Um, you know, a lot of guys saw, you know, through the SFU approach and beyond have used the hole punch. Um, it's great. Makes it just a little bit easier and also a little bit easier to reuse and retie. Okay, so here's some of that moisture, that general rot that, um, you know, that I was talking about. It's still an airtight bag. However, the airtight seasoning is clearly making its way through. Uh, this is leading to uh, you know, short playing durations for this bag. It gets wet pretty quickly. Um, it's you know permeability of moisture. Uh, it's it's definitely past its prime. It's still usable. So I want to uh, remove the stalks in a way that I could both. Uh, see how well I tied it in and if I did a pretty good job um, trying to leave it so that I can tie these in here one more time just in case I need a, a broken in sheep sound for a week and ready to jump on it so what I like to do is uh, make sure that I have needle nose pliers uh, I like to use a Swiss Army knife generally they're exact but not too exact and I'm gonna start with the channel stock here Maybe I can move this closer. And 
you will see that the chanter stock is tied in a number of ways, both around the ridge and what you have these um, packing pieces here that kind of help deal with the seam. You don't have to deal with that in a synthetic um, bag because generally the seams are you know, not this thick. This represents the thickness of the sheepskin itself and how that is all tied in together. But you see that there, the bulk of the tying is done around the lip that is provided in the stock and still there's quite a bit of it left over. I like to have it in, in this particular pocket. Um, and then there are a few wraparounds to kind of keep the remaining portion uh, just flesh with the stock itself. Uh, over years of playing or, you know, hopefully months at sheepskin in, during a pandemic, this, is, this bag has lasted a couple of years. Um, you know, this kind of, this will sort of stick to the stock. So in this removal, uh, you're going to be looking at a lot of, you know, tugging here. What I first like to do is just to kind of locate the original knots from the tie-in process that I usually burn off so that they, you know, so they don't come up done. Let's try a trusty Swiss Army knife here. Now here with the chanter ones, I try to find the natural weak point that is in or in around the seam and the packing piece. There's naturally a little piece, uh, like a gap there, where you can get a small blade in and just make the first cut. I'm gonna make it again here. And immediately you see whoo, the tension, some of the tension released and the divots that remain. Okay, so I'm gonna slowly, already, you can see the work that I did as a crisscross pattern here. Would go around and then around this way and then back around this way. Okay, trying to remove as much by hand as I can so that I don't cut the leftover sheepskin. And I can kind of just piece by piece and strand by strand kind of roll back and examine the work that I did. This looks pretty good. I do not think that uh, I damaged the sheepskin while tying it in. There's always a risk of that. Um, and look at that, it came off in, in a few pieces, just a few pieces. Now you see that because of the seasoning and tying in, uh, me making that secure in the first place and just some sweaty, Look, this is completely just stuck in there, even with all of this nylon removed. I can pull out the packing pieces. They're kind of stuck in there too. But what has to happen here is a little bit of, you can hear the crack. And hopefully this doesn't damage the bag either. So what can happen is that this stuff can get stuck. It can dry out. And then in the removal can tear. So if you think about a chamois that you use to wash a car, who uses the chamois these days? My dad uses it. Okay. But in case you're curious what a chamois was, it's a similar thing. It's a, it's a piece of absorbent leather that people use to wash their car. It's a notoriously uh, a quick dry, quick soak um, type of thing. And <laughs> changes shape when you dry it. So this is going to involve a little bit of manipulation, trying to remove the stickiness. This is like something that you intentionally want it to do when you are first seizing it to get it airtight. It can get, there we go. Starting to see a little bit of leeway here. You can use the tools to help a little bit. See if we get any movement from here. Be careful not to tear. Be careful not to tear it. Yeah. So this may have to be lifted up bit by bit. Okay. I'll leave that one there. We'll kind of come back to this one in a few minutes because I believe that this one might require a little bit of moisture just to kind of 
revived the leather a tad and so as you can see it's really 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 tightly in the groove there and I do not want to ruin this. Let's see how far we can get. Sometimes you just have to ruin the bag in order to get your stocks back. But in this case, here, let's start with the base. As you can see, there's been a lot of buildup of seasoning that has come through. And here I have, looks like I have two points, nodal points where I was able to tie and pull the string through. What I should do there is try to make a very small cut around this using needle nose to help. I can, re I can examine my entry point. And remove a little bit of, a little bit of this twine or nylon string. I believe it's nylon. I'll provide comments about that. All right, so I did actually cut the sheepskin just a tad, but just the surface, just a surface slice. Now, maybe I can get in there. All right. Now we have some movement. stuck over here and let's try to remove what we can around here being very careful not to cut the sheepskin itself just very very small cuts on this string here so that I can eventually get it to weaken you can see why people damage the bags in the process. It's hard not to, but I've found it valuable to hang on to it, if not to try again, tying in or in an emergency, you need something else. Or somebody needs a bag. It's kind of gross, but. In this era, that's not recommended. Well, so my general analysis is that I did a doozy on this one. <laughs> I really, really, really did not want this to come undone when I was tying it in. So now I'm just gonna try to pick pick it out using this this old. Starting to see some movement. Well, my general analysis is I really did a good job tying this in. I may just have to go for it and just cut right through. If I ruin it, I ruin it. But I need these drones. I need the, I need these drones. I need these drones to make some music. So uh, here we go. I'm going to try a slightly different approach. Slightly a more aggressive, sped up approach. Well, and not using the fast forward button. Here we go, back to it. Okay. Getting, turning to the bass drone, getting back to this, working on this first knot. Ah, there we go, we have something. We have a lead here, and look at that. I really tried my best to tie this in very well. Okay, minimal damage, could still tie in another go. But look at that, it is just stuck. This will take some love. Finesse. Oh, there we go. Okay. Movement. 
Okay, spinning. I'm trying to keep the thing, you know, the drone moving in circular ways so that I don't, don't tear something, but boom, there we go. And much cleaning to be done here at the bottom of this one, the bottom of the base. Okay, yeehaw, we have one of them. And if you can look at the original bag, I bet I could get another tie in on this. I'm not sure if I want to, but sheepskin bags are expensive, so you should take care of them, you know. Even when you're done with them, take care of them properly. Somebody gave their life for it. Anyway, um, moving on to this next one. With the middle tenor, I always throw a rubber band on there because I want it to match up with the middle tenor uh, bottom portion all the way through the top. And it's funny because these drones haven't let, you know, these portions haven't left each other since I got this from the factory. Isn't that cool? So I thought they were made together and uh, I always want to keep them together. So throw a rubber, a rubber band on the middle stock before you disengage it. And that way, you know, it will be attached to that. Here we go, examining this stock. I don't remember which order I did them in, but probably this was the second one. And this might have been the first because it looks sloppier. Um, I'm gonna try to salvage the bag. This has only one entry point. As the base, I had two, probably had two wraparounds. Okay, severing just the surface making sure that I don't cut all the way through through the bag. Okay, there we go. Got a little bit going there. Okay, put the knife down, don't cut yourself. Now that goes, wow, that went all the way through. And you can see there that it caught up with that. Very nice, okay. And here we go. Ah, we're starting to get some progress here. Okay, you can see the original loop that I made at the bottom of this. And we're going to Voila, good, that's all of it. Middle tenor moving. I think it did a pretty good job tying that in. Probably will be able to reuse it again. And look at that. Wow. It's out. It needs a good cleaning because there's some caked up seasoning. And take a look at that. Voila. Pretty cool there. Now, also, got one more stock to go. Tenor. This looks a little messy. Could be a, a, a number of attempts at getting this thing to seal properly. So, but I'm gonna keep keep on with my tried and true approach. Identify the last portions of the pull through strings. These are what kind of help tie the tie in string and fasten it. Great, so here we go, found it a little bit. Now I'm going to try to, let's take a little bit of that apart and just sticking to the surface. There's a crossover, that's a, right there. I'm looking for a real standout points to, and not cut the leather. You gotta cut the leather a little bit. You gotta forgive yourself. The important thing is to not um, cut through all the way. There we go. Okay, something's moving. Ah, look at all that. Look at all of that. Getting close, getting really close. I think this is the original loop. I always throw on, when I'm tying it in at first, throw a loop around the stock so that, ah, ha, there we go, voila. 
Now, here we go. Check this out. This is gross. Pretty gross in there. I'm not sure if I want to use this one again. Twisting. Looks like I cut myself. Ah, send in the medic. Ah. Oh, oh, send in the medic for this one. That is gross. Ugh, God, I can't wait to clean that. All right. Now, there's just one more stock that we gotta do. And that is, well, it looks like I have some extra tape over my blow stock. Uh, that was probably to deal with uh, this California weather. Sometimes, sometimes I get a little crack in my blow stock in the season change. And then I'll just throw on this tape and it just magically goes away. Ah, look at this. This one is going to be easy. Probably because it was done a little poorly. It's hard to get the blow stock done properly uh, because it is just shorter than all the other ones. It just gives you less of an area to grip. And so I often will need to do it again. Okay, also taking advantage of a weak point. Here's a weak point in the string. We naturally see a lift. And there we go. I hope you can make it this far into the video because there's nothing like seeing a nasty sheepskin bag go out of commission. For those of you that have stuck around, don't forget to subscribe to Dr. Bagpipe on the YouTube channel. You can also easily find this YouTube channel by typing in Dr. Bagpipe, the full word doctor, doctorbagpipe.com. And you will be redirected to the YouTube site instantaneously. Ah, oh, we've got it. We've got it. Look at that. Coming off before I bleed to death. Ah, oh, look at that. Now I need to remove. Looks like I have it even taped on. That must have been some for the moment decision, twisting, and removing. Okay, now this is definitely one that you wanna clean out. Check that out, that is gross. Okay, I have a few of these because I, I have different options in terms of like uh, whether I have a, a, a tube or go without a tube. Uh, this can't, current setup or outgoing setup was just au naturel. Sheep, open, no tube, and uh, generally came where possible. Okay, now this portion I'll have to come back to and show you that it was done. Uh, but this is going to take a little bit of extra love, probably a butter knife, some oil, and hopefully we can get this part, which is really hard to secure uh, in the first place when you're tying it in. Hopefully I can get this one done. Uh, and then I can reuse this in a pinch if I need a broken in sheep. But um, I'm going to transition over to the Ross system. Uh, I believe it is the Ross Mark III. Uh, it is red with some suede on the outside, so it has um, a hide feel. Uh, I'm going to be using the filtration system for um, a multi-tracking project. And I can talk a little bit about that, uh, how I recorded LAD uh, back in 2007 uh, using the filtration system. And um, uh, let's see, I'll be coming up with some additional videos uh, to follow up on the theoretical components that you've seen in previous videos, um, notably on how to uh, arrange harmonies for uh, tunes or to think in a harmonic concept. And we'll be taking a look at the keyboard and a little bit of um, 
some extra notational materials as well. Okay, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe Dr. Bagpipe, this YouTube channel. Uh, it's very easy to find now, drbagpipe.com. will bring you right here. Um, and if you're interested in more of these theoretical concepts, check out cotechonrecords.com. Uh, you can find my book, A New Complete Theory. And um, that goes into a, uh, an analysis of how the traditional music is constructed and how some of these uh, more recent modern things that I've been doing over the past 20 years, how they can be broken down and dissected and um, discussed from a bagpiper's point of view. Okay, happy new year. Look forward to posting some more videos soon. Okay, bye-bye now.